Hey everyone, Piano Man Chuck here, and I'm here today with the awesome Casio Privia PX5S. Now I've had this board for a few days already, and the more I dive into this, the more I realize just how awesome and powerful this thing is. Yeah, it's a stage piano, it's also a synthesizer, it's also a master controller, and it's a powerful one at all three of those things. So. What I'd like to start out doing is, well, first of all, let me back up. When you open up the Casio user manual, it tells you basically how to maneuver around the keyboard, but it doesn't really tell you what to do or how to do things that you might want to do. But you're going to learn basic functions. For this particular video right now, I just want to get into, um, if you really want to learn this thing, forget the manual do this instead. Just set it so that uh, when it first turns on, uh, initially it's going to be on zero, 00 as far as your stage setting. And if it's not, just press bank 00. zero. And what happens now, your display should read concert grand, and down here below that line it'll say tone, which is piano, P00. It'll say Z1 for zone 1, and it'll say on and then down below that it tells you what this is. It's a grand piano concert tone. And let's get some nomenclature straightened out right away. Um, depending on which brand you're talking about, Korg, Roland, Yamaha, Kurzweil, Casio, they all have different nomenclature or terminology to explain this or to, to describe the same thing. Some company calls it patches, others call it voices, some call it tones, and there's other things that they're, they can be called. Casio likes to use the word tone. So we're going to use tones. Grand Piano Concert is a tone, as opposed to another company called it a patch or anything else. Now, to learn this thing, forget about the manual right now. I want you to just concentrate on this screen, and while you're playing something, Move these knobs and sliders around, and this will give you a real good feel for what's going on. Now I'm going to move knob one, and while I do, uh, yeah, knob one. While I do that, watch the display. You'll see that as I move it, you see a display name of what it is. It's an EQ. It's a low gain. So as I increase it, we get more bass. I'm going to go back to uh, here, and it tells you how much you increase it or decrease it by. So let's do that again. I'm going to go down here and give it more bass. As I increase it, you'll see plus 4, plus 5, all the way up to 12, or the other way, down to minus 12. So let's keep this in the middle right now. The next one, K2 for knob 2, we're going to do the same thing. And we see that it's called middle 1 gain. So we have EQ for mid-range 1. numbers go by as I turn this. And if we go to the next one, we'll see that's also EQ for middle, uh, is mid-range 2 setting. And the last one, high gain, of course. So, you have a four band EQ here, and later on we'll go into other things where you can actually set this for what frequencies you want these gain controls to have. Now we'll move down to the sliders. And while we're playing, slider one, we'll see that's cut off. Watch what happens. I have it down all the way as low as it can go. And I'll slowly increase it. And you see it on the display and you can hear the effect. Okay, so let's move it down here. The next one, slider two, Let's see what that is. When I move it, it's resonance. So as I move it, you should hear some kind of differences. Slider three is attack. It's beyond the scope of what this video is about to describe or to define what these things are. For those that know about it, that's great. If you don't know about it, don't worry about those. Slider four, chorus. Watch 
watch the display for slider 5 delay. As I increase it, we get a little more delay. Alright, let's move it back down to 0 for 0 delay. And the last one, my particular favorite, reverb. Uh, in the previous Casio previews, there were four different reverb settings, plate, hall one, play, uh, hall two, and stadium. And I didn't really notice the difference between any, any of those, but when you come here, listen to how much control over reverb you have. And I believe that particular reverb setting that we're using right now is hall two. You still have the other three settings, but this gives you complete control of just how much. Okay, so now just by watching the display and twiddling these knobs and moving the sliders up and down, you've already learned which one of these does what for this particular setting. That's called stage setting zero zero. There's a hundred stage settings. You can alter any of these to be whatever you want, and these knobs and sliders are a very small part of all the total things that you can do with stage settings. The next thing I want to cover, over here, you're going to see an effect and a song in blue. And one of those two is going to have that blue LED light lit. So if your song is lit and not the effect, Press that button again to get the effects button uh, uh, to light up. Okay, so now once the uh, blue LED is lit on the effect, you can press one of the DSP system or master buttons, DSP meaning your digital signal processor, or your system, or your master. So let's start with DSP and look at the display and it says through. So everything's being passed through without processing further. Let's change it just to see what other parameters we're going to use. Now, up here on the right side, the very two top right keys are labeled minus or plus, or no and yes. We're gonna use those. We're gonna hit the plus key, and we see that the type now changes to equalizer. And of course, the parameters for the equalizer appear down below. So as we scroll down, and notice whatever we're pointing to, has a bigger circle. That means that's what we've selected right now. So this is EQ1 frequency, EQ1 gain, and we can manipulate all of these things. EQ2 frequency, EQ2 gain, EQ3 frequency gain, now input level, wet level, and again, we're not going to get into what these things mean. If you already know what those mean, then you'll know what to do when you edit these things. If you don't, then it probably doesn't matter to you anyway at this point until you learn. And you can always play without even knowing any of that stuff. So, dry level. Alright, now exit backs me out altogether. It basically, instead of exiting, if you've gone three menu layers deep, pressing three exits consecutively will take you back to where you were. Alright, now we go into the system button. Let's press system and see what we got there. Up here we see one of two. There's two pages, so as I scroll down you'll get to the second page. So you'll see what we have. Chorus, delay edit, reverb edit, a string, resonance. Oh, that's an interesting one string resonance. Not a lot of keyboards have that. Um, this is what I'm going to describe because it's so interesting. String resonance on a real piano, if you're holding down, I'm not going to play it, I'm going to press real soft, I'm going to hold down a C chord, okay? I'm not playing anything. So that lifts the physical dampers off of the string. So if I play a related key, a C, E, G, C, a cousin, of that harmonic frequency. Listen to this. You hear that? You hear how these strings that are being held down, which on an acoustic piano the dampers are lifted, so anything I play that's a cousin of these harmonics, they vibrate too. And it gives it a brilliance. Now, listen, and I'm going to take my hand off. 
now it's plain because the dampers are all down. But that is a neat thing to be able to vibe to uh, change here. And if we go to damper resolution, uh, well, we, we can do that too, damper resonance. Damper noise level, and that's it. Okay, let's go back to the beginning so that you can see if I select Chorus Edit, look at the different things that I'm able to edit just in Chorus alone. The type of Chorus, which Chorus, FB Chorus, Flanger, and let's go back. Light Chorus. All right. Now, if we go into LFO Rate, obviously that's self-explanatory. You can set what rate. LFO depth, you can set what depth, feedback even, yeah, how cool can you get, tone, delay time, we touched on that over here, delay send, reverb send, and return. Okay, so let's hit exit, and we're back. Now let's press master. And let's see what kind of things that we can edit and master. We see two different things here, compressor and equalizer. So if I choose compressor, you've got the standard compressor settings that you can change. Threshold, ratio, level, attack, release, and where in the effects chain do you want it? Do you want it post-EQ or do you want it pre-EQ? Okay, so it all makes sense. And let's exit that. Now let's go to the equalizer edit. And here is where you get to change what kind of frequencies that you have with low, mid, and high, or uh, what you have a, a control over. So low, obviously, self-explanatory. You throw a number in there. Low frequency, mid one gain. Thing, mid one frequency, same thing for mid two, same thing here with high. Now you have input levels and output levels. Okay, that is it for the equalizer. And that pretty much covers the knobs, the sliders, and these things that you can edit yourself the DSP, the system, the master, what those cover. In the next video, we're going to attempt to um, go through this edit button and explain what that does. Okay, so I hope this has helped you out a little bit more in understanding, um, basically scratching the surface of what this board can really do. Believe me, if you get this board, you are going to have so much fun with that. All right, anyway, Piano Man Chuck, thanks for watching.